In this tutorial, we will learn how to contain a fluid inside any container, like this. We will use the Blender EV engine for this, and it will help if you already have prior knowledge about fluid simulation in Blender. I assume that you have a basic understanding of what is a flow object, or how to use a domain object in a fluid simulation in Blender. With that much knowledge, let us begin with our startup file for this tutorial. In this scene, we have already created a bowl and also a pipe from where the water will come out and fill this bowl. The water should not go outside this bowl. We need to first add a flow object. So go to the add menu and add an UV sphere. We will now resize this and place it at this end of the pipe. For our scene, scale factor of 0.12 works good. Then use the move tool. If you are new to fluid simulation, you can first watch my tutorial on the basics of fluid simulation in Blender, the link is in the video description. In order to convert it into a flow object, go to the physics tab and enable the fluid property. Change the object type to flow object. And then change the flow type to liquid. Also, change the flow behavior to inflow. We want the fluid or the water to come out in this direction with some initial velocity in the X direction. So, enable this initial velocity option and enter some value in the initial x, like 1 meter per second. We also need a domain object here, so go to the add menu and add a cube. Let us enlarge it little bit by 1.2. Now, use the move tool to move it up so that the flow object and the bowl are both contained within this domain. Let us turn on the wireframe view mode. In order to convert this cube into a domain object, enable its fluid property in the physics tab. Then change the object type to domain. Also, change the domain type to liquid. The basic setup is now ready, so let us run the simulation and verify it. As you can see here, the water is easily passing through the bowl and actually filling the domain object, much as expected. So, in Blender, the domain object has to be necessarily a rectangular object, like a cube. You cannot use another object, like this bowl, as a domain. It does not work, so we need to use a different technique. Now, select this bowl and enable its fluid property, like others, in the Physics tab. In the type, you have to select Effector. This will affect how the fluid will flow through the domain. In the Effector type, select Collision, so that the fluid collides with the bowl, it cannot pass through this object. Simple concept. Let us now go back to the first frame of our animation. And, let us select the domain object, which is this cube. We can actually rename it to domain. And this sphere, which is our flow object, can be renamed in the same way, to flow. Now, select the domain object, and you need to clear the cache files for the simulation here. Or, you can simply make some cosmetic changes in the resolution division, so that Blender is forced to refresh the cache. Let us now see if the water remains within the bowl or not, so please start the simulation. Unfortunately, you will see that the water still passes through the bowl very easily, so it does not seem to work at all. The reason for this is, the effector object must have sufficient thickness, and only then it will work. The thickness of this bowl is quite small, compared to the scale of this scene, so it did not work for us. To solve this, either we can increase its thickness, or we can use this option called, is planar, so that any thickness, or even zero thickness works. But if you use this option, then in the domain object, you must use a higher value for the resolution divisions, otherwise, you will notice some gap between the fluid and the effector object. Let us test this with, 32 only. We can then increase it in our final render, because it will take more time to simulate, if we use higher values for the resolution divisions. So, as you can see, the fluid remained this time within the bowl. It did not leak through the effector, so the fix has worked perfectly. And if you increase its thickness, you will get similar results. We are now ready to bake our data. So, let us increase the resolution divisions. I am using 64, but you should use even higher values like 256 for professional output. Now, scroll down below and change this cache type to modular. And enable the is resumable option. Finally, let us start baking the data. You can see the progress here. Once this is complete, we have to also bake the mesh. So enable the mesh option and expand it. Now start the baking process. Like before, you can see the progress here. 
It will take some time to complete. Once done, please go to the first frame and start the simulation. We can see that the water is well contained within the container, which is our bowl. But if you go to the rendered view mode, it will look very different because the fluid seems white, not like water. We have to set up a material for the domain object so that the fluid looks more like water. Before that, let us add a floor to this scene. So, go to the Add menu and add a plane. Then resize it to cover the entire area. Okay, let us also turn on the HDRI lighting so that the scene looks better. Remember, this HDRI lighting setup is only temporary for this viewport. If you need this same lighting condition also in the actual render output, you have to set up appropriate shaders for the background environment. If you are not familiar with this already, you can check my tutorial on the HDRI lighting where I have discussed this nice feature in details. The link is in the video description. We will now set up a glass material for this bowl. So select it and first go to the render properties. Enable this screen space reflections and expand it. Enable the refraction as well. Now, go to the materials tab and create a new material. We have to make few changes in order to convert this into a glass material. First change this roughness value to 0. Then, reduce this IOR value to something like 1.2. And most importantly, change this transmission value to 1. Then scroll down below and change this blend mode from opaque to alpha blend. This is very important. If you are working with fluid and glass material together, this blend has to be alpha blend, otherwise nothing will look correct. And also enable this option for screen space refraction here. We will use this same transparent material for our fluid as well. So select the fluid which is nothing but our domain object. In the materials tab, select the same material which we have set up for the glass bowl. Then, make a copy of this because we want to change its color just for the fluid material. So, in the base color, select some light color, like sky blue, that looks like plain water. The fluid is displayed with these particles in the viewport, but in the render output, you will get the exact same material that we have set up here. You can fine-tune the material properties that suits your requirement. Now go back to the first frame and start the simulation. Remember, it is playing the simulation data, which we have already baked. One more thing we can do, we can actually hide this flow object. The water will still be generated without any change, but it will look better. Let us play it for the last time. The water is nicely getting into the bowl and filling it. You can use even more than one effector in a scene and make many attractive fluid simulation. I hope you like this tutorial. Please let me know if any queries. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.